Hi, everyone. I'm here with David Fatino. Thanks for being with us, David. Of course. Thank you for having me. All right. So David does uh, quite a bit of work, some videos for us on some of our health club channels and so on. But <clears throat> I noticed David a few years ago. And what I noticed about him is that he was always wearing oxygen. So when he's in the gym, he's got an oxygen tank and he's got oxygen on when he trains. And, you know, I'm watching him for a month, another month, another month. And we're going, he's not dying. What's up? <laughs> you know? Uh, so I wanted to start this series, David, because I want people to know that the, the person that goes into the gym who's obese, who's 300, 400 pounds, maybe more, the older person who's going in with the walker, um, the, the person with the disabilities who's going in the gym and, and working hard, uh, the person in the wheelchair who's going in, those people are inspiring others and they don't even know. Let's take someone who's overweight. The first time they go into the gym, what are their emotions? What are their feelings? I don't know what that's like because I've been in the gym for 50 years. And it just, it comes natural for me. I was never scared. I was excited. I was a kid. I mean, I was a teenager. <laughs> um, and so I want to start to talk to some of the people in our facilities and find out what their story is, because there is some amazing stories, and those stories are really inspiring. So let's start with your story. What was it like? You told me that Adam, <laughs> one of your friends, is the one who drug you to the gym uh -huh. and said, we're going, and he, he drug you kicking and screaming. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what was it like? What was your expectations? You've never been in the gym. You know you have disabilities. You know, people are going to be looking at you, right? So yeah. what did yeah. you think? What did you, you know, the first 10 seconds before you walked into the gym for the first time, what was going through your mind? Uh, a whole lot of, uh, I'm going to be judged. People are going to be staring at me with my oxygen and my tubing. People are going to be looking at me. People are not going to stop looking at me and my oxygen. Like that was my main focus. I was like, I was so caught in my head that I was like scared that everybody was going to look at me like and point go like this you're on oxygen like that's how I felt like I felt this uneasy anxiety producing feeling of fear yeah and they're probably thinking you're thinking okay what's wrong with that guy so tell me about some of the first people that you met and what did they say to you? And what were, what were your surprises about people in the gym and how they treated you? And what was different than your original expectation? Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. I, I, it takes me back. Like, it takes me back to that a long time ago. Um, but it, it, walking up to this big bodybuilder who's like big jacked like just monster of a human and i'm setting up my weights and i'm setting up my exercise and i just remember him looking over at me and i was like thinking like hmm i wonder what he's thinking like and i'm looking at him and he's like squatting like 400 and something odd pounds and i'm just like uh, like my brain's like he is strong and he walks up to me and he's like, I just want to say thank you for coming here. Thank you for showing up because you you're inspiring me. And I'm like, what? Me? You're kidding, right? <laughs> you just squatted like four of me. <laughs> like it was nothing. And you're looking at me like I'm an inspiration. What are you I don't see it. And so like that made my brain go like, 
okay, this big, huge bodybuilder that <laughs> can look at me and go like, I'm an inspiration and I'm strong and he was helpful and, and like any questions I would have, I'd ask him and he'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'll show you. How to, you know, it's a, so it's the interaction that I had with a lot of people that were stronger than me, that, that physically stronger than me. I looked up to them and then they looked up to me because I went into the gym. I just walked in. I don't understand. I still to this day, I still to this very day don't, I don't see it. <laughs> I don't, I still to this day don't, don't see it. I just, yeah. <laughs> so any of you out there, if you have friends, loved ones, family members who have disabilities, maybe they're old. Uh, maybe they're obese, maybe they're in a wheelchair, they have challenges, forward this to them. We're going to do this series on just inspirations in the gym, and David is one of them. And <laughs> it's, 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 it's an emotional thing because of the impact. I want forward this to your friends, to your loved ones, so that they can realize you're, you're going to be idolized in the gym. You're not going to be mocked. You're not going to be made fun of. You're going to be appreciated. You are an inspiration just to go in there. And some of the stories, some of the people that I got lined up for interviews, it's really exciting stuff <laughs> to hear their stories. And when you hear their stories, you got to get rid of all your excuses. You know, you can't be a victim. Uh, we were talking before we turned this on, and yeah. I told David, you know, there's probably at least seven or eight reasons why you can be a victim. Uh -huh. But that's something that I really appreciate about you is you're not a victim. But you could be, you could come up with seven or eight things and go, I'm the biggest victim in the whole world. And any one of those seven or eight reasons, things that you've been diagnosed with or whatever, could be reasons why you're a victim. But that's not your attitude. And it, it sounds like it was really surprising to you when you just mentioned one. I bet you this happens more than once, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it does. It. For for me, I, it's still hard for me to wrap my brain about around how I'm an inspiration. I still like I. It's, I'm living my life, right? I'm living my life. I'm doing my best. I'm in there just like everybody else. How am I an inspiration? That's. The thing that a lot of people might not understand themselves and yeah it just takes a while to get that through your head sometimes <laughs> so the reason i want this video to be passed on is because people need to know that are overweight or whatever they need to know that they can change lives they can change lives david is changing lives and the relationships that he builds, the videos that he does, he does a lot of videos and asks a lot of great questions to members in multiple health clubs. He's changing lives. And it just, it just sits, it makes me sit back and smile when I realize he didn't really know or he still, it, you still don't quite get it how you change lives just by being yourself and putting your best foot forward and trying. So all you people out there who have issues, if you're one, one of those people that's really hard to lose weight, sometimes it's hard. It's not the same for everybody. Um, if, if you know, you have any disability, when you go into the gym, you are going to impact lives that you'll never know about. And I'm sure you've got more stories, David, of things that people have said to you about how you've motivated them. But 
most people probably aren't going to say anything. But no. you are you are impacting those lives. The people that are looking at you like this, they're not looking at you in a bad way. They're looking at you in a respectful way. They're looking, they're admiring you. And they're thinking, wow, I don't know if I could do that. Right? Yeah. And I, I think a lot of people, they, 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 like, just me being in the gym, I've had people look at me and, 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 you know, then go back to their workout. Or I've had people walk up to me. But there are some times where I've heard it from other people not that person like it's like when you're in that environment and you're doing your best and you're lifting that weight and i'll see people look over they're not looking at you like you just said in a negative light they're looking at you going man that guy's that guy's not stopping like you can feel it. Your muscles are starting to give up. No, no, you don't. You don't stop until you like, like that last rep and you have people looking at you. That's okay. They're admiring the fact that you're in there, that you're pushing it. You know, I've had tons of people walk up to me, tons in our gym, tons throughout the time that I've been working out there that have come up to me and been like, man, you're awesome. Man, you're great. And it is an emotional thing. Because before the gym, I was lost. And then I found the gym, and I found purpose. And that's everything to me in life. That's everything. Purpose and finding joy and being a lot more fit allows my conditions to not be so accelerated because as people with my conditions get older, things get harder physically in their body. It's harder and harder and harder. But since I've been going to the gym, I've slowed that process down. So I'm giving myself more independent years without having to have help. And that to me is everything. Yeah. Freedom. Well, uh, David, I want you to know that I appreciate you and I appreciate the impact that you are having on the lives around you. I appreciate that. And you need to know that's true. Yeah. So, <laughs> thank you. Wanna, thank you for saying thank, that. Thanks for being here. Thanks for yeah. sharing your story. Can't wait to hear some of the other stories of people that we have lined up because they're pretty amazing. Yeah. Thanks, David. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right.